Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video is for Linux newbies. If you want to find out how to safely try out Linux without damaging your current operating system, this is the right place to be. Stay tuned. Say you decided to try out Linux to make sure it will meet all of your computing needs. At the same time, you wouldn't want to wipe out your old operating system just yet. Well, there are many ways to safely try out Linux, but in this video we will present you with the one that we recommend. You will need two basic USB flash drives. Make sure those are USB 3 type flash drives, because their speed is very important. The first one you will use for making live Linux USB and the second one for the operating system installation. Now, the first step is to get a Linux ISO which is basically a Linux installation file. You've probably heard that there are literally hundreds of Linux distros available, but this procedure is more or less the same for all of them. For the video, when it comes to downloading an ISO and creating a live Linux USB environment, we will show you how to do it by taking Ferran OS as an example. Ferran OS is an Ubuntu-based modern Linux distribution with KDE desktop environment, thought to be very familiar and friendly towards Linux newcomers. The installation file can be found on their website. Once the download is finished, the next thing you need is software that will make you a live Linux USB. The one that we have regularly used is Rufus. You can install Rufus directly onto your computer or you can use it via the portable apps platform as we did for the video. When you start Rufus, it will automatically recognize your first USB flash drive, the one you dedicated for the live Linux USB environment. You just need to select the ISO that you have downloaded and press the start button. Once the live Linux USB is created, you will just close the Rufus window. It's important to note that the process is the same no matter which Linux distribution ISO you have downloaded. Now, the next step is to enter the live Linux USB environment. It's an easy way to experience how Linux works for you and how it fits your hardware. At the same time, it doesn't change your computer's configuration. Later on, all it takes is a simple restart without a USB stick to restore your machine to its previous state. In our case, with our machine, after plugging in the live Linux USB flash drive, we pressed the FN plus F12 keys combination to enter the boot menu. For your computer, you just need to Google search which combination will work for you. Once in the boot menu, you need to select the live Linux USB flash drive as a boot device. This will take you directly to the live Linux environment. There, you can browse the internet, for instance, access files stored on your machine or USB flash drive, or try other applications that came pre-installed with the Linux distribution of your choice. It's the crucial part of the process. Now you have to be very cautious if you want to install Linux on a USB flash drive without damaging your current operating system. While still in the live Linux mode, now it's the time to plug in your second USB flash drive, the one that you will install the Linux system onto. Your second USB flash drive should be at least 32 GB storage capacity so that your new operating system could comfortably settle down onto it. 
For this part of the video, we have chosen to show you Linux Lite version 5.2 as an example, another Ubuntu-based Linux distribution, friendly and familiar for newcomers to Linux, with a lightweight XFCE desktop environment. The live Linux USB environment automatically shows the new USB flash drive on the desktop. Now there's an install Linux Lite icon on the desktop and you need to double-click it. After that, you need to choose your language and keyboard layout. In the next window, we recommend you to tick the box Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. The installer has automatically detected that there are mounted partitions. Do not get confused by those slash dev slash sdc letters. While in the Windows operating system, for instance, the disk drives are usually marked with capital letters, such as C, D, E, F and so on. In Linux, drives are represented with lowercase letters, like SDA, SDB, SDC and so on. In the next window, a user is presented with two options. To erase the disk and install Linux or something else. Just to stay on the safe side, we will of course choose the something else option. Now, the installer is presenting all the drives available for Linux installation. As you can see, in our case, the Windows partition is marked as SDA, while our target 32 GB's USB flash drive is marked as SDC. It's formatted as a Windows type drive, so we need to change that. We choose Linux's ext4 file system, then tick the box the partition to be formatted during the installation and assign it the mount point so that the new operating system can boot. Now it's the crucial point where you need to be very cautious. You have to choose the device for your bootloader installation. If you happen to leapfrog this step, you will not be able to boot your Windows machine as you've got used to, because the Linux installed will mess your Windows master boot record. So we choose the SDC device, that is our target USB flash drive, as the device for bootloader installation. After we press the Install Now button, we can see that the installer will only change the SDC device, which is what we want, actually. It's time now to choose the user's location, then to make a user account by typing in your name and administrative password, and now the installation process is on autopilot. It will take some time, depending on your hardware configuration. After it's finished, the system will offer a user to continue testing or to restart. By choosing to continue testing, you can turn off your machine and plug out your live USB Linux flash drive. We are finally at the moment when we can start our new Linux operating system. To boot into Linux, now you need to do exactly the same as you did while entering the live Linux USB environment. So, in our case, while our second USB flash drive is plugged in with Linux installed onto it, we press the FN plus F12 keys combination and then choose the USB flash drive as a boot device. And voila! 
we are in the newly installed Linux Lite operating system. Let's take a look at some Linux basics. The very first thing you will do is to install updates, which is what many Linux distributions offer right after the installation. When the update process is finished, the system requires a reboot, so that changes do take effect. These days, the majority of Linux distros are extremely user-friendly, so the same is with Linux Lite. They offer an excellent welcome app that will guide you and help you to get started with the system. There, you can do things like installing updates or install proprietary drivers, if there are any. You can then install language support. Select a light or dark desktop theme or directly install many popular applications. It's all a few clicks away and you just need to follow the instructions on the screen. To check how the light software app works, we installed the restricted extras package, which is highly recommended because the package contains additional codecs and file formats. In Linux Lite, you can also install Google's Chrome web browser, which is the most popular web browser out there. Light software is not the only app for installing software in Linux Lite. There is the Synaptic Package Manager for seasoned Linux veterans, which contains thousands of apps from the Ubuntu repositories. Linux Lite also supports the App Image app format. It's about the apps that users don't need to install at all. All it takes is to download an application in App Image format as we did with the very popular video editor Caden Live for the video. Then a user needs to change the file's permissions and you can start the app by just double-clicking it. There's another way of getting applications. This is via a very popular .deb format, which is something similar to Windows's .exe format. After you download the .deb file, Linux Lite will install it automatically. That's what we did with the XNView MP Image Manager. Linux Lite has a very familiar workflow. It offers a panel on the bottom of the screen. In its right-hand side corner, there are usual suspects, including calendar, volume control, workspaces switcher, while on the opposite side of the panel, you can find the command line shortcut, then files application shortcut, and the Firefox default web browser. Users will find Linux Lite start menu very easy to use and familiar. It's called Whisker Menu. There, apps are offered in categories. Whisker Menu allows users to type in the name of the app and start it. Of course, you can also browse through the Start menu and start an application in that way. Linux Lite's default Office Suite LibreOffice is totally ready to go. It offers all the popular fonts pre-installed. As is the case with other distros offering XFC desktop environment, Linux Lite also is very configurable and customizable via its settings application. 
For instance, you can change the look and feel of the system. By default, it offers a very popular Adapta Nocta desktop theme, together with the extremely popular Papyrus icon set. But still, if you want, you can change it to something else. Linux Lite brings in a classic desktop paradigm, so the desktop is active. When you right-click it, it offers many options. Within the menu, you can browse and start an application, for example, or you can change the default wallpaper to something else. Linux Lite offers quite a few very nice desktop backgrounds by default. If you find the default panel size to be too small and you have sufficient desktop space, then you can make it bigger. Since the desktop is active, a user can make a new folder too. If you install Linux in this way, then it works with other computers too, not only with the one you use to install it. So this is the end of our video. We hope we have helped you in starting with Linux. We have some questions too. For experienced users, what would you recommend when it comes to the ways of trying out Linux? For newbies, what was your first Linux experience? Tell us in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time!